In this video, we're going to discuss fuel bolt quantities going from Tecla structures to Tecla EPM. Okay, so the common problem here is that fabricators will say, why am I getting different fuel bolt quantities importing into Tecla EPM versus the fuel bolt list that you sent me as the detailer? So as the detailer, sometimes what we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll run this 350 uh, C bolt list and we'll run all this and we'll send this and include this in the package that we send to the fabricator. Now, this quantity list is actually correct because it will read all of the uh, assemblies and parts in the model that are selected for the package and it will read all of the field bolts that are associated to that and, and as well as shot bolts and it will include a correct summary here. Now, something is going wrong when it actually imports into Tecla EBM for field bolts. So let me show you exactly what's happening. When we select on this uh, drawing for this uh, B6 piece mark for beam six, and we highlight all the assemblies with that piece mark in the model, you'll notice when we zoom in that one end of this beam is only uh, framing in and has only uh, bolts for one sided connection. Whereas this beam, which is the same piece mark has shared bolts for a double sided connection. So what does that actually mean? Well, if I click on the bolts here and I inquire on these, we'll see that the length of these bolts is two and a quarter of an inch. Now, they're a little bit longer because we have shared bolts through the web of that column. But over here on this particular end of the beam, we have only two inch long bolts. So this turns out to be an actual problem. Let me show you why. If I open up this B6 drawing, we're gonna take a look at the field bolt chart at the top. So there's a quantity of 96 uh, two and a quarter inch long bolts and 84 two inch long bolts. And all of those field bolts are required even though there's only 22 assemblies. The problem is, is that Tecla EPM will not accept a uh, assembly count and a field bolt quantity that's not equally divisible. So what do I mean by that? If I actually come in here with my calculator and I take 96 divided by 22, which was the quantity of the assemblies, notice that it's not an even number. And uh, Tecla EPM will not accept this. It must have an equally divisible number of shop and field bolts imported in based on the quantity of, sem of assemblies. And I'm gonna show you that here in a second. And I think that the problem here is that uh, Tecla EPM stores uh, field and shop bolt information as a quantity and attaches it to those assemblies. And that isn't necessarily how field bolts should work. When it comes to shop bolts, it's not a problem because Tecla Structures is not going to give uh, an assembly that has two different lengths or type of shot bolts, the same piece mark. But field bolts are a little bit different because of the condition I just showed you. Shared bolts going through clip angles um, or end plates or things like that um, on one column versus another where it's a single sided connection versus double sided connection can give us different lengths and quantities. Now, sometimes this, ma sometimes this magically works. When these numbers here um, are equally divisible by the quantity of assemblies, it all works out. So this is why it's hard for fabricators to sometimes figure out why does this work sometimes and why does it not work others? And this is the reason. It's because sometimes you get equally divisible assembly versus bolts and then sometimes you don't. So let's go ahead and take a look at this in Tecla EPM so I can show you exactly what's happening. Okay, so over here in Tecla EPM, I'm gonna go to File, Imports, and I'm gonna go ahead and choose the Production Control XML import. So I created from the Tecla Structures side a XML package. And um, here I'm going to go ahead and browse to this. So there's the, the package for project 001. And then I'll just go ahead and say import. Now I've already got this job created, but it should uh, tie up to the job number as well as the job description from Tecla Structures if I want to go ahead and use that. So I'm going to go ahead and say save. And then it's asking me since there's an existing job, do I want to add and replace um, or add only? Or do I want to delete the existing content and replace the whole job? Since this is uh, just a one single sample, I'm just going to go ahead and replace everything. And then here, this is just a mapping dialog box, which we're gonna go ahead and skip through here in this particular case, just for this example. And here we go. If you wanna pause the video, here's the message, right? So you'll see that what um, Tecla EPM is doing is it's saying, hey, I'm seeing from the actual bolt lists in the model from the XML that there is a different quantity for this piece mark than uh, that, and something that's not equally divisible. So you gotta really read this as the fabricator when you're importing in. Otherwise, uh, if you have a really large job and lots of assembly conditions with this specific issue going on, you could be getting too short or too many uh, bolts. So here I'm gonna go ahead and say increase quantity to 88, but that's not exactly what I needed to do. Same thing here, I, don't, I, I really shouldn't be increasing the quantity to 198, 
and um, you know just doing this for all the assemblies. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and overwrite all for everything that's there. And then when I go to production control and I look at the actual, um, the list of uh, bolts, we'll see here that uh, the field bolt quantities for the nuts and the washers, it's just, it's way too many compared to what was actually on the detail drawing. And so this is what uh, one of those conditions where again, if you don't know exactly what's happening on the Tecla structure side as the fabricator, um, it's kind of hard to understand exactly why the bolt counts aren't matching. And then for you as the detailer, you can see that, hey, you're doing everything correctly. You've run your bolt reports, your drawing templates and everything are okay. But for some reason, things aren't um, you know matching up to Tecla EPM and this is why. So next I'm gonna go ahead and show you how do you prevent this from happening. Now, when you do an import uh, from Tecla Structures, when you select on the line items for the nuts and the washers, um, the fabricator actually has a remark field for a shop versus field set on those imported items. And so technically the fabricator could um, do a, like a filter of these and they could wipe out all these extra nuts and washers if they wanted to, or just filter these out when they're actually doing a bolt order, et cetera. But this is a lot of, uh, I don't know, it's just extra work and there's gonna be multiple imports happening. So the best thing really is to prevent this from uh, being imported in the first place. Now, there's a couple different ways that the detailer can prevent from exporting field bolts. Um, the first one is by actually going into the Techly EPM plugin dialog box and you would uncheck this include bolts, nuts, and washers. And then you would um, also you know, uncheck the uh, include bolt nut washer UDAs. And now the only problem with this is that this is gonna prevent shot bolts from also being exported, which is not necessarily what you want. Um, however, some fabricators say, hey, look, I don't want any bolt quantities, nothing coming from uh, the main detailing XMLs. I'm gonna use the bolt reports from the detailer for both shop and field bolts, and then they manually input those in as separate line items into Tecla EPM. So you have to talk with the fabricator to see exactly which way they prefer it. Now, if the fabricator wants to import shop bolts but not field bolts, let me show you how to adjust the report in Tecla Structures to prevent that from happening. Okay, so the other way to do this is if we go to the reports dialog box, we're gonna go down to the 450 Tecla EPM reports. Now these Tecla EPM reports, um, there's like four or five or so of these that basically are reports that are run by the EPM plugin. And uh, it runs these reports using the normal report template editor. And then what happens is the plugin will read those text file reports and it'll turn the data into an XML that it includes in the package for Tecla EPM. So the cool thing here is that you can customize these reports um, in order to make sure that you get the right type of output over into Tecla EPM. So the one that we're specifically looking for is this uh, Tecla EPM bolt nut washer report. So we need to go find this. So the reason why I came to the report dialog box is I actually wanted to uh, just grab the file name here. And then we're gonna do a search for that um, in the environment installation for US environment so we can find that actual report and we can edit it. Okay, so now we're gonna to go to uh, File Explorer here and I have my Tecla structures installed in C Tecla structures and some people have it by default where the environments are installed in program data. So I'm gonna to go to where the Tecla structures environments are installed on my computer. So I have version 2020. And inside here, you'll see that there's the environments folder. Now I have a common environment and the USA environment installed. And I'm just gonna search through all those environments here for that specific file name, uh, that you know 450 Techly EPM um, bolt report. And I'm just gonna do a search for that. It's gonna look through all those environments and show me where the reports are. Now it looks like it's found three files and they're mostly the same, uh, looks like same size, which is a good sign, um, slightly different modification date on one of them. Now you can kind of hover over this or open up the location and see um, which one you're working with. Now, the USA environment should technically override um, or be higher priority than the stuff found in the common environment with the same name. So I'm actually gonna right click on this and say open file location. And that way I can see exactly where this, uh, this file is located. Now, why do I need to know this? Well, I'm gonna open this report in the template editor here in a second, and I need to know exactly where it's at and make sure that I've got the correct report that I'm working with here in order to, uh, in order to edit. So again, we're in Environments, USA, Common, Steel, and Reports, and now I'm gonna go ahead and modify this. Okay, so here within Tecla Structures, we're gonna go up to the File menu. We will go down to Editors, 
and then we will choose the template editor option. Now, when I open this up, we'll then go to file, open, and we're gonna browse specifically in the USA folder uh, underneath environments. And instead of this Imperial general template, we're gonna go to USA, we're gonna go to common, cause that's where the search uh, showed us to go underneath steel, reports, and then here's where the 450 reports are. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna look for that bolt nut washer report. And so we're gonna be using version two here. So whatever the latest report that's installed on your uh, computer. So I'm gonna open that up and uh, you'll see here that there's a bolt row with a lot of different value fields that includes the data that gets exported. Over on the left-hand side of the screen, there is a tree view. And if you actually right click on this and just go to properties or double click on it, it will open up the properties dialog box. Now, before we actually mess with this, there's something important that I want you to make sure you do. We do not want to modify the report that is inside the install of Tecla structures. Because if we make a mistake, we now have broken the system. So we also want to distribute this modified report in model sharing inside of our model or put it in our firm folder. And so I'm going to go up here to file, save as. So the very first thing you should do whenever you're modifying a report that is in the Tecla structures install is do a save as and bring it over into your model folder. So I've got this KTS field bolts. I'm gonna keep the same exact name, but I'm just gonna save it inside of my model folder. So when you put stuff inside of your model folder, that has a higher priority in the search order by Tecla, and it will run the report in your model folder versus the one in the system. But this makes sure that you don't modify or break accidentally the report that's in the system. So I'm gonna say, okay. All right, so we've got that done. Let's go back here to our tree view. We'll go underneath the uh, bolt row and open up the properties. There's a wizard button here at the right hand side of the dialog box. I'm gonna press this and this lets us do some rules or formulas in here that are gonna allow us to filter out the site bolts or the field bolts. So I'm gonna press this none button and here are all the different bolt properties that I can choose from. I'm looking for this site underscore workshop value field. So I'm gonna choose that. And if it does not equal and then notice here the note says that you need to put this value in quotes. So if it does not equal site, then output this bolt. If it does equal site, then step over this row and don't output it here. So I'm gonna go ahead and say okay. And I'm just gonna go ahead and save that. And then I will, because it's now in my model folder, I'm all good, I'll save. And then I can close this report out. Now I'm gonna also open up another report. So in that same folder here, USA Common Steel Reports, we're gonna go find uh, the 450 bolt uh, report here for the user to find attributes, right? So this is where you can customize and add additional properties for bolts to export it. I'm just gonna open up this one. We're gonna do the same exact thing. So it's just a little bit of practice. Again, remember the first thing that we should do before we modify a report is do a save as, and we'll put this inside of our model folder. So I'll go to C, Tecla Structures Models, find my model folder, same exact name, and just say okay. Now I'm gonna go into this bolt row here. We'll do the same thing. We'll use the wizard, press none. We'll find the, uh, basically the site workshop value field or report property. We're gonna say does not equal site, okay. And then it will output that rule if it's basically a workshop bolt. And if it is a field bolt, the else statement will be true and it will step over. So I'll say okay. We will save this because this is now inside of the model folder. We can close this down. And then when we go back into the reports dialog box, check this out. If we select on a bolt here in the model, so I'm gonna pick on a field bolt for instance first, and I'm gonna go down to the 450 bolt uh, nut washer report. Let's see here, nope, those are fab seat. So that's the old reports. So we'll go to the Techly EPM bolt nut washer version two. I'll select on that and I'll say, run that and nothing gets output, right? Because when we look at the properties of, this, properties of this bolt, it's a site bolt. But what about workshop bolts here, right? So shop bolts. So if I select on this and I go ahead and say create from selected, you'll see that it actually outputs that row. So now when we make the Tecla EPM exports, shop bolts will be included, but field bolts will not. If you found this content useful, please subscribe to our channel and press the alerts button to be notified when we upload new content.